Good morning. I am Technical Sergeant Joshua Casey, military training instructor, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As the flights move into position, we would like to take a moment and ask visitors to help us keep our graduates healthy and safe. Please cover your mouth while coughing or sneezing, wash your hands frequently, utilize hand sanitizer, and avoid attendance at ceremonies if you are experiencing flu-like symptoms. For the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from entering the retreat pad and remaining in respective seating area when taking photos during the ceremony. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you may proceed onto the retreat pad after the flights are dismissed. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Utilize the handrails and watch for tripping, slipping, and falling hazards. Restroom facilities are located in the reception center and to the right of the flagpole. During this morning ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. In the military, ceremonies are held to accord distinctive honors to national symbols or individuals on special occasions. These ceremonies are also used to display the proficiency and the state of training in a command and to promote teamwork and pride in the organization. They also contribute to the public morale by displaying symbolically, symbolically the strength and unity of the military in support of the nation. All of the movements that you will observe today are known as drill. The purpose of drill is to enable a commander or non-commissioned officer, such as a military training instructor, the ability to move their units from one place to another in an orderly manner. To aid in training by instilling discipline and habits of precision and response to the leader's orders. And to provide for the development of all leaders and the practice of commanding formations. Throughout today's ceremony, you will see the flight saluting as one form of drill. The civilian counterpart of the salute is manifested in various ways, such as placing your right hand over the heart when the national anthem is played, or raising the hand when greeting a friend. The military salute is given in the same manner as the gesture of recognition and a friendly greeting to a comrade in the honorable profession of arms. To maintain proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be at times we will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the Air Force song, and the reciting of the Airman's Creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent at these times, reflect on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand their right hand over the heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Now marching into position. Flight 153, led by Technical Sergeant Arlen Wiley. Flight 154, Technical Sergeant Jacob Bergen. Flight 155, led by Technical Sergeant Michael Proy. Flight 156, led by Technical Sergeant Richard Thompson. One five seven. Technical Sergeant Denzel Miles. Flight 158, led by Master Sergeant Corey Hyman. Oh. 
Flight 159, led by Technical Sergeant Clarissa Hart. Flight 160, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Hasso. Flight 161, led by Technical Sergeant Chelsea Gimbel. Flight 162, led by Technical Sergeant Travis Maury. Flight 163, led by Technical Sergeant Anthony Cruz. Flight 164, led by Master Cody Hopper. Flight 165, led by Technical Sergeant Ariel Coleman. Flight 166, led by Staff Sergeant Joshua Reeves. Flight 167, led by Technical Sergeant Nadia Cruz. Go for the next one, right. Musical support for this morning's ceremony is provided by the graduates from Flight 168, performing under the direction of Master Sergeant Nathan Heal, military training instructor, hometown Yorba Linda, California. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic training syllabus and training requirements, Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours for practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force core values, service before self. With each Drum and Bugle Corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at a formal military ceremonies. At this time, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Lee. Good morning, everyone. As I pray according to my faith tradition, I encourage you to pray according to yours. Lord of all creation, we have gathered here today to observe the time-honored custom of retreat of our nation's colors, the signal of the ending of the official duty day, and a time to pay respect to our flag. May the stars and stripes ever be a beacon of light, liberty, and hope for all who set their sights upon them. And may the colors forever be etched in our minds as a symbol of the sacrifice and dedication of all those who have served before us. Each day, as our airmen pause from their duties during the sound of the bugle, may they be mindful of the generations who have fought before them and pave the way for them to now walk upon. This morning, the Wolf Pack of the 331st Training Squadron prepare to graduate basic military training and receive their coin. BMT hasn't been easy, but they have persevered. Coming as individuals from all different walks of life, they have learned how to lead the way forward and have finished as a team. They have experienced what it looks like to demonstrate integrity, put personal desires to the side, and do their best in everything. Thank you for your watchful eye over them, Lord. Would you grace us with your presence today in this place? In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We 
would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 1990 graduate of Basic Military Training, Colonel Jeff Pixley, accompanied by his wife, Andrea. The acting senior enlisted leader, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 1997 graduate of Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Carl Vale. From the graduating squadron, the commander, 331st Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Josh Harden. The senior enlisted leader, 331st Training Squadron, and 1990 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Tawana Hannibal, accompanied by her partner and 2000 graduate of basic military training, Senior Master Sergeant Tamika Brown. Also in attendance with us today, the commander, the 97th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Blaine Baker. The command chief, 97th Air Mobility Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Cesar Flores. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoyed today's ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Hannibal will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, I give it a seven. We got a little room to work on it, but I'll come back to that. Congratulations to our graduates. The men and women who have come before you have airlifted troops and supplies into the jungles of Vietnam, executed precision airstrikes in the deserts of Iraq and Afghanistan, delivered humanitarian aid to villages in Africa and South America. They have launched missiles and flown satellites, defended airstrips and strengthened partnerships. They have stood on the North Pole, the South Pole, and everywhere in between. Now, you stand here today having transitioned from civilians to recruits to trainees, prepared to take over the watch, carry the torch, and continue the legacy of those who came before you. We know you are ready, and momentarily, the world will know you are ready too as you assume the title, role, and responsibility of airmen in our United States Air Force. Tomorrow, as you stand proudly on the parade field that for decades has bared the weight of your brothers and sisters before you, I want you to take a deep breath. Reflect on the significance of what the date is for tomorrow. A day in history, 78 years ago, on 23 February 1945, a mixed force comprised of sailors, marines, and airmen. Airmen of the 15th Fighter Group flying P-51 Mustangs, faced with what was deemed to be insurmountable odds, supported the raising of the U.S. flag on Mount Suribachi during Operation Detachment on the island of Iwo Jima. Though only six Marines are depicted in the famous photograph and ultimately the Marine Corps Memorial Sculpture, then, as it is now, it took everyone trained, willing, and prepared to do their part, play their position, perform their role. Today you may believe your role to be less significant than others, but I will tell you that you have never been more wrong. The future of the U.S. Air Force, the future of America, the future of our liberties and life as we know it stands before me in the form of 673 soon-to-be airmen. And if you don't believe me, just ask your fired up friends and families who've come to witness your success. You arrived 
as individuals coming from all walks of life with varying reasons for your willingness to serve. You joined a team that thrives on diversity. Diversity in thought, experience, language, race, gender, and ethnicity. You arrived as individuals, but you graduate tomorrow as a family and members of the best squadron in the world, the 331st Training Squadron, AKA the Wolfpack. As you move to the next phase of your Air Force indoctrination and begin to learn about your specific jobs, your field and specialties, never forget we are all airmen charged with the protection of our country, furtherance of our intellectual enterprise, and simultaneous success of our ancestors and descendants. In the words of Vernon Jordan, you are where you are today because you stand on somebody's shoulders. And wherever you are heading, you cannot get there by yourself. If you stand on the shoulders of others, you have a reciprocal responsibility to live your life so that others may stand on your shoulders. It's the quid pro quo of life. We exist temporarily through what we take, but we live forever through what we give. Finally, I leave you with this. You are joining a team that will look to you to define the character of our Air Force for years to come. We have the utmost faith in you because every time you recite the Airman Creed, you adamantly proclaim that you will not fail. And we believe you. As your senior enlisted leader, I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements, and I have recommended to Colonel Pixley and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson that you receive your coveted airman's coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to airmen. Congratulations. Instructors, you may now proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's coin and, for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze, with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem, and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our air and space force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem 
is the Air Force motto, aim high, fly, fight, win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest Air Force. The Space Professional coin also has a distinctive design. On one side, it displays the original emblem of the Space Force, the Delta, which was first used by space units in 1961 and honors the heritage of the United States Space Force. Beneath the emblem is the year 2019, the birth date of the United States Space Force. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the Space Force motto, Semper Supra, which translates to always above. This represents the Space Force's role in establishing, maintaining, and preserving our nation's dominance and freedom of operations in the space domain. On the coin's border is a commemorative inscription that reads, awarded on the occasion of becoming a charter member of the United States Space Force. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Hardin will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, there you go, Chief, you, you trained him well, thank you. Welcome to the United States Air Force Basic Military Training. First, let me say thank you to all the friend, family and friends joining us here today. Seven and a half weeks ago, your loved ones departed home, set on a journey into the United States Air Force. Today marks the day that they officially become airmen. Your support has, has pushed these airmen to successfully cl complete basic military training and join the world's greatest Air Force. Let's give them a round of applause. I will tell you though, on, z on the first day that they arrived, they showed up with all different kinds of hairstyles, different clothes, and the widest eyes I've ever seen. But, but after many hours of repetitions of folding their laundry, making their beds, countless hours of drill, and lots of mentorship, and I put that in quotes, mentorship, uh, from their instructors, I'm proud to say they've made it to the end. And it is my honor to introduce the 673 airmen from the 331st Training Squadron as your nation's newest airmen. Wolfback, over the last two months, your military training instructors and section leadership have asked a lot of you. They've held you to a high standard, and your Wolfpack instructors are extremely dedicated to the craft and are the very best at what they do. Family and friends, please help me show the instructors how much we appreciate their efforts. <laughs> Family and friends, these Wolfpack instructors have worked tirelessly over the last two months providing these airmen a world-class instruction to lay a solid foundation of what it means to be an airman. Instructors, thank you for your dedication and your tireless effort to shaping the future of our United States Air Force. Yep, there we go. All right, Pac, tomorrow you will raise your right hand and swear to defend the Constitution against all enemies. Today, while you're with your family and friends, think about what that means. Think about what that oath you take tomorrow, what it means to you, and what it means to your loved ones. It is an awesome responsibility. 
And make no mistake, no matter what your career field is, you are a warrior. You have a critical role in defending our country and enabling our leaders to meet the United States national objectives. Even if you're not at the tip of the spear, you'll be a key enabler of the greatest Air Force the world has ever seen. And remember, as you leave and depart for technical training, build on that foundation that your MTIs have laid out for you. Take care of your wingman and become the airman we know you can be. But I won't lie, there will be tough days in your future, but there will also be some of the best days you've ever had. Never forget why you volunteered to be part of this family and what it means to be a member of the Wolfpack. It has been my honor to be your first commander, and I know that you will excel throughout your Air Force career, just as you've done here in the Wolfpack. I look forward to seeing you out in the Air Force, doing all the great things that I know you, do, you will do. Congratulations, Airman. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Harden. At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize basic military training's most outstanding performer, someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in the challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate is from Flight 156, Airman Emily Haskins. She is from Keller, Texas, and joined the Air Force to become a SEER specialist. In the stands cheering are her father and mother, Doug and Veda Haskins. Her recruiter is Staff Sergeant Jose Moreno from the 330th Recruiting Squadron, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Be seated. Instructors, place your flights at ease. This morning, we honor our heritage of military customs and traditions as we welcome our newest airmen into the ranks of the Department of the Air Force. There are two purposes for this morning's retreat ceremony. The retreat ceremony is a solemn event conducted at every United States military insta installation around the globe. It signifies the end of the official duty day, and today is symbolic of the end of training for our graduates. But more importantly, it is to pay respect to our nation's flag. When we offer our respect for our flag and our national anthem, we have an opportunity to reflect on the democratic principles that have made our nation great. The meaning of freedom Dignity of the individual, the pursuit of happiness, and national unity all come to mind when you think of our flag. It is the symbol of our nation to the world. Military members have a special bond with the flag. These airmen are part of the flag's tradition because they symbolize the spirit and sacrifices of the military and dedication to the defense of this great nation and the principles it represents. When we salute our flag as it is lowered, we ask that you as to you think, think about the flag flying over Arlington and other national cemeteries. 
Think about the flag being carried into combat by the service members who preceded us. Think about the freedom Americans enjoy today. Freedom without precedent in the history of the world. The men and women who stand before you today represent the projection of the strength behind our flag. Our flag security detail consists of members from the graduating squadron, led by Master Sergeant Ulyssa Muse. Our commander of airmen is Master Sergeant Zena Wright. At this time, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem.
The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It is flown at half-staff to honor our military members. The flag has flown in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. It is flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. The flag has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped set free, yet it remains invincible. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force song. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. Graduates will be dismissed momentarily. Families with graduates in the Drum and Bugle Corps are asked to wait for their graduates on the north side of the West Bleachers while they secure their equipment. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when descending the bleachers. Town pass ends at 20 hundred hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you and please enjoy your stay at the 37th Training Wing, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Okay. Okay, so graduates are dismissed to your family. Graduates, you are dismissed to your families. Top graduate, please report to the podium.
Sam, can you record?